Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. I'm doing a series of spotlights on remarkable business intermediaries, brokers, and M&A experts from across the country. The Great Resignation is in the news, and we're going to hear about the effects it's having on franchises and business in general in today's climate. Joining me on this segment is Roxanne Rapsky. She's the co-founder of DFWFranchiseExperts.com. Roxanne, welcome to the program. Hi, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Roxanne, tell us a little bit about your work, and specifically, who are the types of clients that you specialize in helping? Okay, great. Well, I really, you know, the easiest way for me to describe what I do is I compare what we do um, to what a dating app does. So our role is to really match make and help people that are considering businesses find the right match for them. I think people go at this backwards, they start focusing on the business and they um, may or may not buy a business that's a good fit for them. So we focus on the client, the individual we start with giving them what we call an entrepreneur profile. It's a lot like a personality profile that tells us how they are in business. And then after that step, we help them build a business model. And then we present franchises to them that we think are a good fit for them based on everything that we've learned about them. And then we coach them through that entire process um, to really do proper due diligence before when they get to either a no or a yes answer, it needs to be with all of the right information. And we actually do that at no cost. We work just like an executive recruiter. So the franchise companies pay us to find the right fit for their concept. We know who they're looking for, what their ideal client is. Uh, typically our client is coming out of corporate America. It's an executive. Um, he or she's an executive coming out of corporate America. But many times it's the non-working spouse that gave up their career to raise the children. The children are older now and they wanna get back into the workforce, but they don't necessarily wanna work for someone else. And then we also work with uh, those transitioning out of the military, current business owners that are looking to, I think more people are um, learning about and thinking about diversifying their revenue streams more so than they ever have in the past. We've been hearing a lot about the great resignation in the news, and I only imagine that it's sparking a lot more interest in people that have been kicking the can down the road, thinking about it, yeah. taking it a lot more seriously nowadays. Has this affected your industry? Have you seen an uptick? What have you seen out there as a result of this great resignation? We have. We're seeing a lot more interest uh, in business ownership. You know, one of the things I hear the most is I've made a lot of money for other people, and now I really want to do it for myself. Um, they're they're um, tired of the hours put in, and it could be any industry from a physician who sees patients all day long and then has paperwork later on. Um, they realize that's not sustainable. Then you've got, um, in fact, I'm actually just in the middle of um, editing a podcast that we did on a pediatrician that is a full-time doctor and a mother and then had to care for a sick mom. And it's just a lot. So people are reassessing how they wanna live their lives and they want control over their hours. So why franchises? Is that a go-to? Do people prefer looking at franchises versus starting something from scratch? What are the benefits? Well, first of all, we don't know what we don't know, right? And when you're starting a business from scratch and you've never owned a business, there's a lot that you don't know. There's a lot of mistakes that can be made and those mistakes can be very expensive. So what a lot of people are looking to do is not recreate the wheel. They're looking for a proven business model that they can execute on, right? They've got skill sets, they've run businesses, they've been in corporate America, or they've been at home running a household and they're very good at multitasking and keeping schedules and keeping everybody on task. They want a business model that they can run with. And this is, it's a way of mitigating risk and also ramping up a lot quicker. Um, whoever founded these businesses made all the mistakes and then they finally figured it out they became successful and now they're duplicating that. So it's a matter of finding something that's the right fit that you can really run with, something that you're gonna enjoy. The last thing I think that you wanna do when you buy a business is buy yourself another job, right? You're looking to, you're looking for 
a, a lifestyle goal as well as an income goal. So you, you mentioned to your point of not knowing what you don't know. Uh, a lot of folks leaving the Dilbert Cube, the corporate America, to go off on mm -hmm. their own, it's often their, fir their first time thinking about starting a business. So when they reach out to you, do they know, even know what to ask? What's the most pop, you know, popular question uh, that they're asking you uh, to begin with? And do they even know what type of business they want to look for? You know, some have an idea and some don't. And some have an idea, but it's... Um it might just be like an emotional thing, right? Here's the thing is we all love to eat. We all love food. And so I think people are drawn to food um, simply because they enjoy eating, but that's not necessarily the right reason to buy a business, right? Food's fun, it's comforting, it tastes good. Uh, I would say the number one question that I get is what's the hottest franchise out there? And then my answer is always, well, what's hot to you? Cause what's hot to you, Mark, and what's hot to me could be completely different and what's hot at a hundred thousand dollar investment or what's hot at a million dollar investment right so that's not an easy question to answer um, i can tell you industries that have, you know we've got a lot of data now right we've made it through the great recession and now we've made it through a pandemic so we can look back and tell you the types of businesses that have weathered both of those storms um, and a, a lot of people that tend to be more risk averse, especially are looking for not necessarily something sexy. They want something that's tried and true. So we do have some data there, right? Like I can tell you all the home services types of franchises did very well um, during the recession, or I'm not sorry, the recession, the pandemic. So yeah, to your point, let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, you can't make that blanket statement that it's a good time to buy a business. It, it, it really does depend on the type of business and the industry uh, to know whether it's a, it's a good buy today. Is that right? I think there's things that are more tried and true and proven. And then there's things that are riskier that might be a little bit more sexy. So it depends on your appetite for risk. And that's the one, one of the things that we help you assess. Um, what is your appetite for risk? You know, some people are very attracted to the more niche, a little bit newer, maybe a lot of, not a lot of competition. And then some people are like, look, everybody needs a plumber. It's a dirty, ugly business, but plumbing's plumbing and, and everyone needs one at some point. Every household does. Right. So it really depends on the client. So for folks looking to, to, you know, buy a franchise and get started, are there any myths or misconceptions you hear about out there that people don't quite understand about fran franchising? What's a big one? I would say, oh, let's see. Um, well, one of the biggest myths is, or misconceptions is that it's all food and retail uh, because we drive around and those are the big signs and logos that we see, right? But there's, there's almost 4,000 franchises out there in many different industries. So there's business to business, um, you know, which tends to also be more Monday through Friday, nine to five, there could be maid services, there could be carpet cleaning, there could be sign making, you know, there's a lot of, uh, uh cost reduction for businesses. Uh, my business is a franchise. So there's a lot out there, uh, that most people don't know about. What is a big, like mistake people make when you're, when you're getting ready to go, you know, and, and getting excited about. Uh, getting into a franchise and, you know, getting all your ducks in a row. Are there any big mistakes or pitfalls people make in the process that might sabotage them from getting their franchise started? Uh, well, there's a couple things. Um, you don't want to make an emotional decision. You know, um, sometimes people get overly enthusiastic and excited and a good salesperson gets a hold of them and they go through, the, go through the process much too quickly and they don't do proper due diligence. I can't tell you how many times I've run into somebody who bought a franchise and never called one franchisee in the system. You, that's part of your due diligence is speaking to existing franchisees and asking them questions, right? You're gonna learn a lot about that system by talking to existing franchisees. You know, what is their experience like? Are they making the kind of money that they thought they would make? Are they hitting their goals? How is the training and support? You know, and ultimately, if you had this to do all over again, would you do it again? 
Roxanne, what inspired you to become a, a franchise broker and help people match up their, you know, their desires with franchises that are available? How did you get started in this industry? Well, I am one of my, I'm one of my typical clients. And um, it's funny because we, we, the title of our podcast is Unpredicted Entrepreneur because most people in franchising were not born and raised in franchising. Something happened. So I was in mortgage banking for 20 years. The markets imploded. I lost my income overnight. I was a, a significant portion of my family's income. And I had to pivot and figure it out what I wanted to be when I grew up, right? So I was in my early 40s and, um, you know, the carpet was pulled out from underneath me. And I knew I wanted to do something that um, I wanted to help. I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. And I've walked in those shoes. I understand how comfortable it is. All those medals you see hanging behind me were earned after I lost my job and while I was starting my business. It was a very difficult time for me. So I ran a lot. Um, so I understand what it's like. And um, that was in 2007 and I've never looked back. Excellent, Roxanne, before I ask you my last question, um, is there anything I didn't think to ask that you feel is important to share for someone that's uh, considering leaving their Dilbert cube and going off on their own as it regards to uh, franchising? I would say, you know, reach out to somebody that's an expert, that's a consultant that, that has your back and is going to take you through a process, you know, find someone in your local area. Um, I would, I would say you want to look at different concepts. You certainly don't want to go down the aisle and say, I do to the first one that you look at, take your time. Don't rush into it. Uh, make sure you have all your ducks in a row. Um, there's always going to be something out there that'll be a good fit. So there's no rush. And for folks tuning in right now that would like to speak with you, how do they find you connect with you and learn more? Sure. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm the only Roxanne Rapsky, R-A-P-S-K-E. Uh, you can also go to my website, which is dfwfranchiseexperts.com. Roxanne, this has been terrific. I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing with my audience today, and I wish it continued success for you and for all of your clients. Thank you, Mark. Likewise. That was Roxanne Rapsky with dfwfranchiseexperts.com. And this segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.